2019 marks our 150th anniversary. It's remarkable to think that in all this time, our core mission has hardly changed at all. Nature's original purpose was to disseminate original scientific findings, but of course also to provide the general public with accessible science-focused news coverage. Over the course of the last 150 years, science has changed a lot and so has nature with it. And it is thanks to our ability to adapt, I believe, that we're still here today, playing a central role in dissemination of scientific findings. What's really interesting about looking back at the old papers of nature is seeing how science has changed and evolved through the ages, and more importantly, how we have evolved to reflect that. Take particle physics as an example. In the early days, we would get these short reports, almost informal correspondences, describing physicists' first explorations to really understand the basic blocks of matter. The exploration of this particle zoo continues to this day, um, but whereas in the past we'd have relatively short papers from a one, maybe two authors describing their tabletop experiments tucked away in the back of a laboratory, these days we're dealing with a multinational cast of thousands using facilities the size of a small city. One of the most fascinating aspects of what we publish is that you never know where a research discovery will lead to. You it can have huge implication for research, but also for society. Take, for example, the isolation and culture of mouse embryonic stem cells from an embryo, which we described in Nature in 1981. So it was a unique opportunity for biologists to study embryonic development or the property of these peculiar cells. But then later on, uh, uh, these cells were isolated from human embryos. And this was amazing in terms of opening a complete new approach and field for regenerative medicine, but it also was a complete uh, ethical earthquake uh, because now scientists were stepping into territories that was completely new. They were in principle able to destroy or to generate in vitro or to modify the human embryo. So nature has always had uh, this second role of being a platform for discussions of important debates uh, while they emerge. From the very beginning, it's been part of nature's mission to be not just publishing research, but also to helping scientists to discuss the issues around research and also to communicate those results to a broader public. So we have a big team of news editors, of opinion editors, multimedia, we're doing audio, video, all of these things to help communicate science and the scientific process to as broad an audience as possible. But also, our articles are not just involved in communicating science, we're not just some kind of passive conduit for research, we're also really interested in shaping and improving the way that research is done. So we have a lot of discussion in our pages around issues such as reproducibility, research integrity, ethics and diversity in research, and I think we've really had an impact in the research community on those issues. We serve researchers by doing so much more than just publishing their findings. For example, we partner with them to devise new standards and practice to enhance the transparency and robustness of the way that the science is reported. Back in 1869, Nature was overseen by one editor and his assistant. It's remarkable to think about it these days, considering that we have over 100 members of staff uh, on Nature today. And that is not including our authors. Our author community has changed in interesting ways. It's become much more diverse. It now includes large international multidisciplinary consortia as well as citizen scientists. An anniversary such as this is an opportunity to look back into the past, but also into the future. Of course, the future is notoriously difficult to predict, but we have some indicators where we may go. For example, nature's scope has already expanded beyond its original focus on natural sciences to now embrace um, applied sciences and social sciences. The format of the scientific paper is likely to change in the future 
not least to, to take into account the growing importance of data and computation. But if our past is anything to go by, one thing that is unlikely to change is our focus on championing excellent research.